X-Men 3, The Last Stand, movie review. Jean may not be completely gone. Meanwhile, a cure of sorts is developed that removes mutant abilities. And this causes a bit of an uproar and different reactions towards it. Magneto uses it to springboard himself entirely into a full-on conflict. And there is indeed a last stand. The first two movies had too many characters and this one only worsens it. The characters are also out of character a bit often. It's really obvious that Halle Berry went and complained you know, she did not want to return unless she got a bigger and more important role, and it just could not be any more obvious in the movie. We have many new mutants, and the result is what you would expect. Most of them really don't get to use their powers, or their powers don't get used for anything particularly interesting. There are some cool uses of powers, but a lot of the action scenes really could have been in any other action film from, you know, the 90s or 2000s. The acting is pretty good. Magneto goes far too over-the-top evil in this one because they really needed him to be the villain. Nightcrawler teleports himself entirely out of the film franchise, at least for now. The dilemma and ambiguity of the cure is interesting and they do get some good mileage out of it thematically, but on the whole this film is far more brainless than the first two, and it also ditches the realistic approach that they did with sillier, more comic booky outfits that really work best in the comic book medium. And also they just... It's clear that they didn't want to go all the way, so it it's this awkward in-between kind of thing and it really doesn't work. The Phoenix storyline is really poorly handled. I'll go into that more in the spoilers video. And the fans will be sorely disappointed. The film is yet again focused mainly on Wolverine as evidenced by you know, they made sure to put his claws on the cover just to make sure that no one, you know, didn't go see the movie fearing that he wouldn't still be the focus. There are more references thrown in towards the comics, and in this one they're just so blatant and not at all well integrated. So people who don't know exactly what's going on will just be scratching their heads the film seems to be made for the fans, and yet it really lets the fans down. The effects are quite good, and some of the action is pretty cool. And we have some nice matchups also. For being mainly an action film, it has surprisingly little action. I'd say a good half hour passes before anything really happens. The dialogue lacks the cleverness and layers that it used to have. It sometimes tries for it, but it fails miserably. The humor is tried for, but it doesn't really work as well as in the others. You can really tell that this had other writers and that it was made in a hurry. The film reeks of rushing. Perhaps the most blatant example is the one portion that is narrated by 
R. Lee Ermey, who of course rocks, he always does. Yeah, when you see that, or those who have seen it, you know exactly what I mean. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.